They lied to you. Yeah. You heard me. They lied to you. Who, you ask? <laughs> well, the people who taught you how to mix colors, of course. Uh, they just led you astray, making you think that you could just mix any version of a primary color with another to make a secondary color. But do not fret, children, for I am here to show you the true way. Hi, uh, my name's Ollie, or the Sierra Mystify, if, uh, because that's uh, apparently what I've decided to call myself. And um, it's Pride Month. Long live the gays. And uh, we're talking about colors. Yeah, so this is something that they had taught me pretty much as soon as I got into art school. It was, one of the, it was pretty much the first class that I took um, on my first semester. Um, and I, I just think it's really a shame that more people don't know about this. And uh, it really will help you to be able to control what the outcome is of your color mixing and really uh, allow you to have a lot of control when it comes to what colors you end up with. This is a painting that I did that is, of course, all reds, but if you happen to notice, you know, there are definitely some that are more orange. I mean, overall, it's a bit more orange, but some are more orange, some are more pure red, and then there is a little bit of a pinkiness happening here. And that also is something that I was able to control because I knew the specific technique. So I would like to show you that today, and uh, let's get into it. Okay, so here's what we are going to be working with first. We are completely depending on just three, these three primary colors, which if we go by what um, a lot of times is taught, this should be all that we need to mix everything. You know, with of course the addition of black and white. Uh, so let's try out mixing some colors with these and then we'll see what happens. So this is my this is palette paper right here which is uh what i like to use as a palette because it's the cleanup is very easy you just tear off a piece of paper and you're good but uh since we're just mixing colors in this video it's just going to work nicely as like a clean slate for us so let's say we're going to start by mixing an orange let's see how that goes so let's see how they mix So now let's do a green. Okay, this appears to be going pretty well so far. Let's try purple. Okay, yep. Yeah. So, you might be noticing at this point that, um, hmm, this doesn't quite look like purple, does it? So we, uh, we had success here and here, but right now, uh, we're not really coming up with something that looks too nice here. Um, you know, you might try to connect, correct the color, you might try to add, um, either one back in and more doses to see what would happen and then you might just say oh maybe it's just too dark so let's add in some white and see if we can get a nice vibrant purple out of this let's see if we can save this well the blue's really coming through so okay let's let's add in a bit more red and see if we can save this thing okay so, as you can see, still no purple in sight. So what is going on here? You know, this might be a little confusing and uh, this, is, this is kind of uh, what you might end up with if you're, you know, let's say I I'm pretty sure this was what happened with me. Um, in high school, we had a project where you are to make a color wheel. You know, I think this is a pretty normal assignment. 
you know, and so everything's going well, you know, you got your primary colors down, you know, sometimes you can get one or two uh, secondary colors that look good, and then you end up with this. You know, where, where, what happened? Where, where did you go wrong? You know, you followed everything that you were supposed to do, but yet, where's the purple? Let's, let's talk about that now. So what we're going to need to do is we are going to need to divide the color wheel up further. So uh, I'm going to put up a picture of a color wheel almost like you would see in Photoshop. So you are seeing like the whole spectrum of color here. Um, so you know, you can divide this in different ways um, in order to choose what kinds of paint colors you uh, will pick out. Um, so if you are only choosing three, it is going to be more difficult to bridge the gaps between those different points. So, you know, you only have three points and then there is all of that space in between those points, which are colors that you are going to have to figure out how to mix using only those three colors. So what I have been taught and what I think is the uh, best way to mix colors instead of using just these three colors is to use uh, what I actually found out recently is called a uh, split primary and so what that ends up being and mind you I don't know if these are the exact best versions of these colors for this but this is just what I have gathered throughout my classes you know what the, what the requirement lists have had on there so what I have is a warm red and a cool red so you have kind of two different temperatures in this case I have cadmium red light and quinacridone crimson Quin quinacridone did I say that right? I don't know anyway what that whatever that is um, so I have those two and then I have I don't know if you couldn't guess two blues so I have a warm blue and a cool blue so this one ends up being more on the green side and this one ends up being more on the red side and conveniently these ones actually say a uh, green and red shade right on them so that I know and then here I have cadmium yellow medium and then yellow light hansa so here I have the warm yellow and the cool yellow so what's going to be great about this is if we needed to specifically solve our purple problem as I will show you I will choose these two colors it's a you know a blue and a red like we did before but they are going to be closer together on the color wheel so this is going to be more on the side of purple and so is this too what, what happens when colors kind of have to stretch across the color wheel if you may have seen a version of the color wheel like this where neutral colors grays browns those types of colors are in the center of the color wheel and this kind of makes sense when it comes to paint mixing because um the farther that you have to stretch across that color wheel you will end up with a more neutral version of that color so in this case you know we got a gray because we were stretching too far across uh, whereas you know we're hoping to f find you know something like these two that's a really vibrant uh, bright nice color okay so at this point I tried to explain why I thought we ended up with nicer colors for the orange and the green than we did for the purple but I ended up rambling a bit so I thought I'd just do a voiceover here so what I think happened was that I think the yellow is actually a pretty pure yellow. I think it's pretty uh, in, right in between a cool and a warm yellow. That is why I was able to work for both combinations. But I think that both the blue and the red were a little bit warmer. So they were closer to that yellow. So they were able to work better together, but they could not make a very nice purple because they were both pretty far away from each other on the color wheel. However, I do wonder that since the blue was able to come through a little bit better in the attempt at purple, perhaps it is a little bit more of a pure blue as well, but I'm not exactly sure on that one. Okay, so let's test this out now. Let's, let's do it in the same order. So let's start off with orange again. So I'm going to be taking my two colors that are closer together on the color wheel. So this one is a lot warmer and so is this one. So you might notice already that this is already almost looking like an orange. Definitely a red orange, but 
it's already almost there. So that's going to be very helpful to us. And this yellow is already, you know, it's still yellow, but it is, you can definitely see the warmth there. You can see also that you can get such a variation with these. You are going to be able to get a very wide range of colors with this. I want to show you how great this is with, let's say, pastels, because if you want to make a really nice pastel that is still vibrant, which hmm, I, I tend to like to do that quite often, let's see how this works with white. So when it comes to this white that I'm using, I do know that it has a bit of a cooler tone to it or hue or however, whatever, and I'm not, I'm not very picky on those words usually, I, I mix them up, but, um, so, you know, it might affect it slightly, but generally this is still, I think, a pretty nice orange. I think we're pretty much giving it the best chance that it could have in this case. Okay, now let's do a green. So I am going to take my green blue here and my greenish yellow. Yeah, this yellow I think is pretty evident that it's cooler. It definitely looks more like a like a lemony yellow. Oh, I still got orange on there somehow. How does that keep happening? Oh my goodness. I just got too red in it. Well, I'm not doing a very good job with this one. Frankly. Yellow generally is just a, I don't know if I want to say lighter, but I guess lighter color. It just, because it's, it's overpowered a lot more easily than other colors. So there we go. There's a pretty nice green, I'd say. We got a little bit of contamination from the red, unfortunately, but I'd say we're working with a pretty nice green there. So let's try and you know, smear it all over the gosh darn place. Let's try and make that a little bit lighter and see what kind of color we get. So here we go. We got a pretty nice, this ended up being like a pretty, you know, minty green. You know, so if I wanted more of a green green, I could add in a bit more yellow still. But like I say, when I add this white to it, it tends to make things a bit more cool. So let's now get to the one that we really needed to fix, which was our poor purple here. So let's go in with our blue that is closer to red and our red that is closer to blue. So immediately, we're able to see a pretty significant dif difference, I'd say, between this and our black looking color over there. And, you know, you can, all, you can even see this warmer purple up here and this cooler purple here. Just the range of colors that you would be able to get just from these two. Let's add in our white and see our nice pastel. So yeah, if we are to compare these together, that is a pretty significant difference. This almost looks green. It's kind of funny. Um, that red just totally was not able to come through at all on, on this one. So yeah, so you can definitely see how much of a difference that ended up making for us here. Okay, so there's that. Um, I do want to address that this isn't necessarily a perfect method. Um, and I do have an example of when it didn't quite work out right here. This was actually from uh, the same class that I first learned this method of color mixing. Um, on, I have two versions of it here, but on this one, it was actually a particular challenge. When it came to this one, I kind of had some funky colors going on. The problem was that they are very vibrant. So uh, when it came to mixing these secondary colors like this, you know, I'm able to get some pretty vibrant colors, but I wasn't able to mix exactly these ones. So what ended up happening was, luckily my instructor happened to have some 
tubes of paint that were already pretty similar to these. They were just a bit darker, so I was able to add white to them without them looking too pastel or anything because there was already so much of that pigment and it was exactly where it needed to be on the color wheel. So lightening it didn't really make it too far off from where it, where it needed to be. So that those are the specific times when you might need to have a specific tube of paint for a specific color that you are needing to mix. And this is pretty much the only case that I can think of where it was a specific problem. I think in most cases you should be able to pretty well mix every color that you need. Yeah, there's that. I really hope that was educational for you. I hope that's going to help you in your future paintings. If you are a painter or if you are just curious, then I hope it was entertaining enough for you. And also, if this is your first time visiting my channel, I would totally appreciate it if you would subscribe. If you really enjoyed this video, please press the like button. And if you have anything to say about this, you know, if you have any comments on how I mix my colors, please let me know in the comments. I am really trying to grow my channel, so if you know anybody who would really appreciate seeing this video, I would definitely appreciate it if you could show it to them. I'm just trying to get as much viewership as possible, so that as many people as possible can see my content and see if they end up liking it. So, alrighty, thank you for watching, and um, I will see you when I see you.